Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. Today we've got something special for you. This is a kit we just received in uh, yesterday. This is a new release from Tamiya, which uh, should be out uh, soon, uh, maybe in the one, two month range. Uh, usually they send us their kits uh, kind of uh, early, early release, and maybe released in Japan at this point, I'm not sure. Uh, so let's see, this is the uh, M4A3E8, or the EZ8 as it's well known as, uh, European theater version. I'm not, I wasn't aware it was deployed in the Pacific theater, but um, maybe it was. Um, this is not a rebox. This is a new kit, uh, completely new, uh, 2015 stamp dates on the plastic. There were uh, people commenting on uh, missing links, uh, talking about how maybe this was a Tasca kit, because to me it might have either licensed or bought some of the Tasca molds. I can pretty much confirm that's not true. I did look at some Tasca uh, releases. I also looked at the original Tamiya release um, and uh, did my homework on this one <laughs> uh, a little bit. And anyways, it doesn't, it does not look like a, uh, a, a prior released uh, plastic. Now, I didn't go over every single uh, styrene uh, sheet in this to, to make sure, but uh, it did look like from uh, what they were, what Tamiya was talking about it, or what they were saying about the kit, in addition to just evidence that's out there that uh, it basically is a new kit. So that said, uh, it is a 1 35th scale kit, um, if anyone is concerned, because it kind of is a little odd shaped box. So, uh, but this is a 1 35th scale, as indicated. Uh, it says, uh, detailed miniature series number 346, um, detailed static display model, accurately captures World War II M4A3E8 with sloped front armor sheet, 76mm gun, and HVSS suspension, faithfully, faithfully reproduces surface textures of cast metal turret and welded areas, depicts T66 single pin tracks, comes with commander torso figure, and two marking options. Uh, before I even open the box, I will tell you what most people will probably not like about this kit, uh, at, least, at least most, I shouldn't say most people, I will say a segment of the, the, the people who prefer much more accurate uh, type uh, tracks, and that is that it does have rubber tracks, so, or vinyl tracks. So, um, now that's odd because I believe one of their earlier releases of this kit uh, came with tra track links, so um, at least when I was looking at a a blog online of somebody building the older to me release it had individual track links so yeah uh, this one does not rubber tracks all right let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the side they've got um a i'm not sure my camera is actually i think it's in yeah we're focusing aren't we yeah we are okay good um this shows a fifth armored division germany april 1945 basic uh, decal and and uh, or at least marking scheme in olive drab. And on the other side, another nice plain olive drab, 4th Armored Division, Bastogne, Ger January 1945. All right, well, let's go ahead and pop her open and take a look, or crack her open. Can't use pop, it's crack. All right, all right, so here, here's the dreaded, here's the dreaded tracks right off the bat. Um, they are very, very solid. Um, you can see there the, that, uh, if I can get my camera to cooperate and, and, and focus, come on camera. You can do it. I know I'm not holding it completely steady. There we go. So there's some nice detail there. Not, not that they've done a bad job reproducing the uh, tracks in vinyl. It's just, it is vinyl. That's for sure. There's not going to be any little air visibility space between links or anything like that. So they are very nice vinyl tracks. I mean, in terms of just the, you know, overall quality, they're very modern. Don't see any problems or kinks or anything like that. Uh, and again, here we go. The, the This is the top hole piece. Um, basically, just let me do a quick inventory here. So we've got this piece, the, the turret in a separate piece. We've got uh, one piece of plastic, another two there, uh, uh, and then we've got another. So about, uh, was that five or six? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then including the two hull pieces, uh, kind of six, seven. And then we have a small uh, an M50 uh, piece as well. Decals, no photo etch. Uh, that I can find anyways. Uh, but we'll go ahead and go through all these as we as we planned. All right, so um, the top hole, going down the uh, first hole here. Uh, so, so you can see definitely the, the weld detail they're talking about is stuff like this. That looks very nice, very realistic. Um, front of the hull there, 
um, some kind of visible um, issues with the some of the you know push pin or whatever the scenario here in the back is but uh, yeah those and then of course that weld or the upper uh, detail and the marking the stamp marking or the factory marking is also there but uh, yeah very very nice uh, very nice details let's see if the weld detail goes along the back there as well I'm actually having to look at the camera to see myself yeah it does it does so they have a nice weld seam all along the outside there um, so that looks good let's take a look at the trip turret also obviously has the same textured pattern textured effect and some uh, not really weld marks there but I know there's some seams there um, there it looks like some minimal welding going on and uh, yeah that looks nice too it's some again nice uh, nice markings on the on the top of the turret. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the larger plastic piece here. There is a figure included with this, a uh, figure, I assume, commander figure with the machine gun. Or is it the gunner? One of the two. Um, let's take a look at that right off the bat. So, yeah, some interesting details. He's got his head turned, obviously, uh, using the 50 cal. Uh, looking at this piece, of course, we've got the, the front um, laces of the hull there. Um, again, that's some ni there's some nice texturing on there that I can see. Uh, some fine parts, nothing really kind of out of the park kind of thing, but you know, just basic stuff. They do have some individual track links for spares on here. Uh, imagine uh, potentially maybe a uh, as to me has been doing, there might be a individual track link kit coming out with this, or a detail up a d detail kit that may include additional photo etch and such parts. We'll have to see. Uh, sometimes I get those items after I get the main kit release. So um, there's some r black uh, rubber uh, grommets in there for probably the idler and, and drive sprockets. Oh, actually, there's eight of them. I guess yeah. that would make sense. Actually, huh, interesting. So some came in a bag, oh, individually, and then these came as a, as a grouping of four there. All right, so obviously this is the same. One of the reasons I know, for example, uh, on the Tasker release kit, these are individuals, and on the this to me kit, they are um, obviously one piece. So uh, some of the detail there on the road wheels. Um, again, you know, all solid Tamiya, uh, stuff here. I think these are actually the, um, I'm not sure those are tie downs, but on the side of the, um, you know, tank, these, these supports, I guess, for the, for the, um, the railing that goes along the top of the, the tracks, uh, I believe that's what those are, which sometimes are, um, and prior kits have sometimes been molded into the, the, the hull molding, but not in this scenario. Um, and again, that's the same piece. I don't know why I'm looking at it. It's like it's going to somehow look different. It is not. And then here's the lower hull. Again, this is something I compared to the, the prior release of Tamiya uh, EZ8. And this basically is a lot different. I mean, you've got these um, structural support arms for the, for the uh, suspension uh, that aren't weren't on there there's additional um uh, additional hatches and, and detail here that that wasn't there in the original release so um and here's the side sections the side lower hull so again lots of nice bolt detail there i'm seeing a little little some little uh push pin or some kind of uh remnants there but that looks like something that can be easily sanded and Oops, I had them in the previous shot, but anyway, so yeah, they're, they're there. Uh, there will be photos, by the way, if you, this is a first time watch for my video unboxings. Um, there'll be some detailed photos at the end with some macro shots and so forth. So 
you can uh, wait or skip ahead. Your choice. Um, the uh, the top uh, hatches even have some nice uh, cast mold detail there. Um, wow, that's uh, that's a lot of uh, details. Uh, the actual mantlet there has stamp marks on it, and again some nice texturing. Um, commander's hatch, nice detail there with the ports for the uh, armored glass. Here's the muzzle brake. Does just have a plastic tur uh, plastic um, plastic gun. I said turret. I don't know why. I guess because I'm thinking about what goes in the turret. But uh, the uh, main gun, the 76 millimeter, is a single solid piece of plastic. No um, seam marks or anything along the sides that I can see. Let me see if I can kind of get in there so you can see it. But yeah, that, that's it there. The, the piece with the hole in it there. But yeah, it looks like they've done a nice job making that a single piece plastic. Part, and then the two half sections for the muzzle brake, obviously. Small detail pieces like the shovels and stuff around here. Again, probably my photos will give you a better look at those. And the last piece of regular styrene is on this M, uh, this 50 cal machine gun, the M2 machine gun. And of course, that's nicely detailed, except for obviously the the air cooling section would be more a little bit more in real life. If you paint it correctly, it, it probably would look right. But there are 50 cal uh, photo etch sets you can get that really do a nice job uh, with those to, to give them all the all the max detail kind of things that you would probably want if you were a super detailer. Uh, some some of the clear crystal parts for the Commander's hatch and such. Let's see if we get the camera to cooperate, but there we go. Um, and then some lenses probably for the various lights that are on the front of the vehicle. And lastly, in terms of kit parts, we've got the decals. Not a highly complex kit. Obviously, this is probably a fairly quick build for most of us. Um, especially the fact that it doesn't have individual track lengths would speed it up greatly. Um, and it's really basic uh, decals for this. Come on, camera. It's just so easy. Why, why can't you just... I just don't understand why it, it doesn't want to focus at certain ranges. Like, see, I can get there and focus. Mm. Someday, someday I'll have this this sorted and have a better system. I, I really was waiting for them to release a better webcam for like doing stuff like this. I mean, I'm not the only person doing, like, close-up shots. In fact, I did find a woman doing uh, crafty stuff. You know, she was doing, like, um, cards. She was hand-doing cards, and, and she had a decent webcam, but she was still having some issues. And I think she was using her SLR to do shots of, like, her, basically, uh, from, like, a, you know, slightly back. All right, so instruction manual is obviously um, going to be typical to me, a high quality here in terms of parts and... Uh, and step-by-step uh, -step, uh, instructions. Everything looks fairly straightforward. Um, lower assembly of the hull and, and uh, tracks and all that goes, and then the upper hull and, uh, and so forth and so on. And uh, looks like there's about uh, 20, 31, 32 steps uh, overall. And some additional markings in here for uh, 5th Armored Division Germany, April 1945. I thought that, that might have been one of the ones on the box too. And then, yeah, the, the Bastogne, Belgium, in January 45, 4th Armored Division uh, photos. They don't have a parts overlay on this, which is probably not necessary, because I believe all the parts are probably used. But that is one thing that is not here. Uh, then they have this, the, the quick reference or reference guide that they've been including with Japanese, Chinese, English, um, French. Might be some German in here, too, I think. But yeah, lots of different languages, just giving basic information about the uh, subject and so forth. All right, well, let's take a look at some close-up photos and then come back and conclude.
enjoyed the photos on the Tamiya EZ8 Sherman, uh, which is a new release and should be out soon. This is obviously um, November of 2015, so I'd probably expect to see this kit uh, out there maybe by Christmas time or January, something like that. Um, probably by Christmas time um, and um, or by December. Let's take a look for it. I'm sure some people are doing pre-orders on it now. Uh, by the way, there's a, a nice shot of now that that's the commander shot they show. So maybe that is not like the box where, oh, actually, okay, I'm sorry. I, I thought he was manning the 50 cal, but he's actually just in front of the 50 cal. The way they have it there and he's like hands up against the side of the 50 cal ammo thing, I was getting a bit confused not looking at it closely. But yeah, you know, he's basically just doing a call in for artillery or talking to other tanks in his, in his uh, tank division. And again, can't get that darn camera to focus. There we go. It looks pretty good, actually. All right. Well, um, again, so uh, if you uh, like this video, please uh, click the like button, which should be on the page here somewhere, um, or leave a comment or, or a feedback if you're interested uh, in doing that. And of course, we appreciate any feedback we get. We'd like to thank Tamiya USA for providing us um, this review sample. And uh, we'd also like to invite anyone interested in um, doing more with our uh, samples like reviews, uh, build reviews, uh, build features, blogs, whatever, to contact me. Um, this particular sample may already be snapped up, but uh, we do have quite a few on our site. If you check the front page of the homepage, you'll see a link under the reviews area for available samples, and you can check that out. And again, I talk about this a lot, but just to kind of keep keep everybody who's not one, viewed one of my videos before uh, informed, uh, we do uh, obviously send out samples to potential reviewers, but it's always good to have something out there on the internet you can point to us and say, yeah, I've done something for either my club or some other website or blah, blah, blah. And it's not that we don't send out samples to new reviewers, but it obviously helps when you have something already uh, showing, say, the caliber of your photo taking or, or something like that. And, and you don't have to be a master modeler by any means. We do obviously like to send out samples to a wide range of modelers from from even beginners to uh, to to to, uh, to the, the the pros. So, uh, anyways, that's that all said. Uh, hope you have a uh, a good rest of your day, and we'll see you next time on cracking the box.